Welcome to another episode of Business Beat with me, Odette. If you're one of those entrepreneurs who's a visionary, who's an innovator, who's creative, and who doesn't really like looking at the number side of the business, have no fear. Joining me today is the co-founder of Outsourced CFO, who will be giving us all the tips and advice that you as an entrepreneur need to know when you are starting your business, running your business, and what it is that you need to do to make your business survive and thrive. Hello, hello, and welcome to Business Beat. Hello, Adet. It's an honor to be here. Thanks so much for having me today. I'm really excited about the conversation ahead. Where exactly did this idea for an outsourced CFO come from? If I have to talk about the concept of outsourced CFO, we have to go back about a little bit more than eight years from now. Mm -hmm. um, there was this one startup grind event uh, in Cape Town. So a startup grind is an event where about 70 or so entrepreneurs would come for an evening uh, talk where a panel interview would happen with a successful entrepreneur. They would talk about their journey of starting their company and growing their business over the years. And we went to the very first one of this, uh, these kinds of events in Cape Town uh, about eight, nine years ago. And we, we saw there were 70 different entrepreneurs in the room that night and not a single accountant. And we just felt like, look, someone has to help all these entrepreneurs with their finances. We think mm. we can be those guys. And that was really where the idea came from. That's so important. Why do you think financial management is lacking and what do you think is the gap that your organization can plug for everyday small businesses, whether it be a sole proprietor or a small to medium sized enterprise? So founders and entrepreneurs are often super busy with a hundred different high priorities for the company. And as a result of that, the, the, the numbers really often come last. And if, if finances comes last on your to-do list of 200 things every day, it's often not gonna get done. So I think that that's where an organization like Outsource CFO can, can jump in and just be that almost financial co-founder for the entrepreneurs who can, who can just jump in and roll up their sleeves and help sort out the finances and get the numbers right. And also get it to a point where the entrepreneurs can really understand like, what's going on in the company right now. Like what are the numbers telling me and how can I change my decision making based on that to build a better company ultimately? We know that a lot of startups, I think it's something like 80 or 90% of startups fail within the first two years. And usually that's because they haven't planned nicely in terms of their financial management. So what are those three or four basic, basic things that every entrepreneur needs to have in place in order to not just survive, but to thrive? I would say the first thing really to look at that most entrepreneurs get right is just a basic income statement like profit and loss, what are your income streams, what have your expenses been for this month, what did last month look like, what did the month before that look like, can I actually at least see my numbers in real time in mm -hmm. terms of income minus expenses equals profit and loss. That's a starting point. The next thing I think that's really important that often that next step doesn't get taken is really thinking about the cash flow. So it's easier to look at the income and expenses. It's pretty tangible and pretty easy to, to look at, but really figuring out how that income and expense line item moves into cash flow is a really important thing. Um, and then I would guess um, a runway would also be a major thing. When you start out, you have a certain amount of money that you can spend on getting this business on, onto its own feet. Right. So figuring out like what your actual runway is, how many months can the company sustain itself right now, given the amount of money that it's still falling short each month until it gets to a point where it breaks even um, and can start really taking care of itself. And that's often the entrepreneur's job then to figure out how do I bridge that gap of the amount of money that will need to be put into this business to get it to a point where it can almost start running on its own. Mm. And sometimes it's, you know, borrowing from friends and family. Sometimes it's really speaking to a bank manager when you're a few years in. What are some of the mistakes that you see entrepreneurs making in their businesses before they come to you and some of the fixes that you need to put in place? I think that eternal optimism that an entrepreneur needs to start a business, to make that big jump and believe in themselves enough to take the risk, 
I think that is maybe the first mistake that can sometimes jump in as an entrepreneur has to have an optimism bias. You absolutely have to believe that this thing is going to work and you have to be willing to pour all of yourself and all of your resources into making it a success. And that's amazing and necessary. It helps with things like winning over clients with your passion and energy. It helps with attracting a great team, which is really important if you want to grow the company. But often when it comes to the numbers, mm. that's where things you know, things go a little bit off the off the right path. Because if you're too optimistic in, in terms of what you expect the numbers to be in the next next little while, it often comes back to bite you. The second one I think then when, when business owners start out is just getting compliance right. Because compliance is even oh, the worst yes. entrepreneurs in accounting, right? Um, it's it's boring, it's scary, yes. it's a whole bunch of different things that entrepreneurs don't have time for and don't have a background or confidence in, so they avoid it. Um, and then I think the, law, the third thing maybe is to make sure you invest in your finance function because we like to talk about it as the heartbeat of the organization. Kind of generally around one to two percent of turnover is generally a good kind of benchmark for what a, a founder team should spend on their bookkeeping, accounting and reporting and taxation okay. function. But that gives us so a good guide, yeah. That sum. Yeah, do that sum and just get a feel for, look, I'm under-investing or over-investing or not investing at all in my finance function and maybe I should rethink that. We know that COVID mm. had a massive impact on every sure. individual in the world, not just in South Africa yeah. and certainly not yeah. only entrepreneurs. I also know that COVID brought about a whole lot of opportunities. I know that government made available grants for small businesses. In the clients that you've been servicing, have you seen a lot of businesses take advantage of these grants? Have you seen a lot of businesses survive and thrive despite the grants? What has the trend been in your space? There were a couple of elements of called green shoots from government. I think the TERS project was really well placed. We kind of employee jobs were supported with relief funding. I think that was a really good one. Uh, we helped a lot of clients uh, access uh, relief finance on their uh, just on their payroll, um, which which really have, went a long way to make sure that retrenchments were were halted. Right. Um, and then there were also a couple of different other sources of relief funding that you could do applications for. Uh, we work quite closely with the Small Enterprise Finance um, Association, CIFA. So through them, you could also do these applications for relief funding and a whole bunch of clients managed to access relief funding. There wasn't a lot going for entrepreneurs in this time. Tell me, do you have some resources on your website that people can go to, can have a look at, to see where they can get help, when they need help, and how to contact you if they do need some financial guidance and assistance? OCFO.com is our, is our new international home. We've relaunched our, our website to appeal to a bit more of an international audience as, as well, because we've seen a lot of, lot of new business in the last 20 months have actually come from outside of South Africa as business has now kind of gone global to some extent, right? Right. Um, so so on, on OCFO.com, we have a, a blog with a whole bunch of different resources and a lot, lots of different insights for founders from cash flow management to financial systems to basics of accounting and those kind of things. And it's also the perfect place to, to find us. Lord, it was wonderful chatting to you. Thank you so much for your pearls of wisdom and all the best for you and your clients um, for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. And best of luck for all the great work you're doing as well. Catch me again next time when I'll be talking to more amazing South Africans who are doing extraordinary things. That's it from me, Odette van der Haar, your host from Business Beat. Until next time.